Hello, welcome back. Hopefully you had a good little break. So next up we have something which we call the humans of scientific computing. So it's interviews where we basically talk about ourselves. And our special guest this time here is Samantha Whitke, who was in the previous talk, actually. Hi. Um, so Samantha, can you tell us a little bit about yourself again? And maybe go more into what's your background and how did you start your career? Okay, yes. So um, I did my bachelor in Germany in uh, geoecology or natural sciences, and then went on to uh, start my master's in uh, geoinformatics from where I went on an exchange year to Finland, to Aalto University um, during my master in geoinformatics. And that led me to um, being in contact with the Finnish Geospatial Research Institute, um, where I asked for a possibility to do my master thesis here because I really liked Finland and I really wanted to stay here. Um, this was almost nine years ago now. I'm still in Finland. <laughs> so it all worked out. I got to do my master thesis. They actually paid me for it and even offered me a job after that uh, at the research institute where I was working with satellite remote sensing um, mainly. And at some point they said, okay, um, we would actually like everyone to have a PhD because that just makes life at the research institute much easier. Don't you want to start one? <laughs> and I hadn't thought about this before so much, uh, but I was like, hey, yeah, it's the same as my normal work. So why not like package it and do a PhD? As you maybe mentioned before, I'm still working on that, even though this is now also already almost seven years ago. Uh, that's mainly due to it being uh, very short only full time, but mainly being part time. So I like did other work during the same time. For a short while, I did it full time because I got a grant from Alta University to focus on it. But there was a few projects that didn't go as planned. Maybe you know about <laughs> these things. Um, and yeah, nowadays, like two years ago, I uh, uh, got an email that CSE was looking for a geoinformatics specialist and I was reading like through the job ad and was like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, well, this sounds interesting. Um, but I was a little bit like afraid also of it because CSE, like the big scientific computing center and my background is not in like really computing or something. I learned most of it actually during the PhD times like I learned uh, about how to use Linux. I learned uh, programming in Python and so on uh, during that time. And I learned also how to use, or well, yeah, how to use supercomputer partly through this course, but also um, through CSC uh. um, courses. So I was like an, uh, I knew how to apply this like uh, for my research. I knew how to run something in parallel on the supercomputer, but I had never looked behind that. So I was a little bit like, um, is this really like something mm -hmm. for me? But then I, I uh, like talked to a lot of people in especially the code refinery community, and they very much encouraged me to do that uh, still. And yeah, here I am nowadays. Um, I work two years now as a geoinformatics specialist helping geoinformatics researchers with bringing their um, bringing their computations to the supercomputer um, and doing training and so on. And nowadays a bit more general, so it's not any more geoinformatics specific, but also like for other fields and to like outreach, yeah. trying to reach people in the, like in the early stages, for example, of their yeah. PhD to know so, that there is these CSC services and stuff like code refinery available. Yeah. So what does it mean trying to help people to bring their work to the CSC supercomputers? Like, let's say, let's exclude the code refinery work and other teaching yes. things. Like what's a daily life? What's a day, what's a day in your life look like? Well, um, so in, in that regard, it's basically like this morning, we had a workshop with, in this case, humanists. So we asked mm -hmm. them like, what, 
what is uh, like, do you know about CSC resources? Do you know about supercomputers that they exist for your work? And they said, no. So uh, we had to say like, okay, um, this is not just for super computations, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, but it's also like, if you have something, a small thing that you need to run multiple times, mm -hmm. like trying to um, explain it in a way that they can relate to it yeah. based on their current work. And that yeah. is mainly what a lot of this is, um, mm -hmm. trying to lower the barrier towards um, supercomputing, HPC, all those big mm -hmm. words that if you are not coming from computational backgrounds yeah. um, are maybe not that familiar. Yeah. So do you actually help them to like, do you take their code or analysis and actually help them get it started running? Things mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Okay. Um, so so yeah. if we know about know about that people struggle mm -hmm. with um, making yeah. their own code run, for example, on our mm -hmm. supercomputers, then um, we get to help them, and we get to yeah. like uh, tell a little bit about uh, the maybe different way of thinking that you need to start when you switch from your own laptop to the supercomputer. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's very often that we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Very many mm -hmm. people um, find that their problem is too small, or they are they have not mm -hmm. read enough documentation, or have some mm -hmm. other reason for not asking for help. Yeah. And then of course we cannot help. And sometimes we then get to know about it very late in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course we also still try to help. But the best experience for us and also for the researchers that we support is like when we get involved right in the beginning when mm -hmm. uh, for CSC services for example when we are yeah. already part of choosing the right service because we have so many of them mm -hmm. um, and um, as a researcher yeah. it's not necessarily clear what is the right service for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that is also for example a very general question that one could yeah. ask from us where we can say like, okay, this is perfect for this service or perfect for another service. Yeah. Okay. Um, what have you learned in your past research, like from your research career to what you do now? What, what did you learn when studying research that helps you now? Um, I think the main thing that helps me in my job right now that I have learned from the time as a researcher is how a res how a, I don't know how to put it quite, but how a researcher thinks. Like um, it's not just telling, okay, we have these awesome services. Here are uh, twenty courses you can do to learn about these services. Um, but it's more like uh, also thinking about where the researchers are and what are their goals. Mm -hmm. For uh, most researchers, that is to get the paper out. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is the main focus. This All this yeah. stuff like version control, uh, reproducible research yeah. is like a minor thing at the side, which may, yeah. might even be bugging them rather than helping. Yeah, it's and like this researcher I think, mindset. Yeah, sort of. exactly. Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. um, being able to help on a level that is actually helpful for yeah. for a researcher, not only like, okay, here is all the things mm -hmm. you need to know, but also trying to convey that there is something as good enough. Yeah. There is um, like small steps you can take to make your mm -hmm. and others life better. You don't have to do everything um, yeah. and that we can actually help with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So you said you were a little bit worried about the transition when you started. I mean, were you like, how were how worried were you? And like, like, what were the kind of things you worried about? Let's put it that way. And then how did it turn out in the end? Was it actually anything worth worrying about? No, it was not. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah. that as a first thing. Okay. Um, yeah. I was very worried about like, not being able to answer all the questions people might have mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. one big part of this job that I applied for was user support and was training mm -hmm. and I was not 
doing a lot of this at the time, mainly with Code Refinery, actually. Yeah. And there, it was always like a second person there. When mm -hmm. I didn't know something, mm -hmm. then the second person could jump in. Yeah. So thinking about this being alone there and mm -hmm. being alone with a user, with a researcher who asks me questions and I yeah. might not know the answer, that mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. a very scary thing. Because for me, the support I have gotten from CSC was very personal and very good. And like, mm -hmm. I, of course, like that was my picture of how it's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. I'm still mm -hmm. thriving for that. But since yeah. then, I've also learned that like, it's okay to not know everything. We cannot know everything. There is so much to know, like yeah. not only about our services, but about scientific computing in general. Yeah. Um, and very often I still know maybe one little thing more than the researcher who is asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. just telling, hey, I know that yeah. we have a documentation page about this, or hey, you could look mm -hmm. into this tool, this might do what you want to do. That yeah. already helps sometimes so mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. that the researcher is happily going away. And yeah. um, it feels like having accomplished something, even though I actually didn't know yeah. the actual answer mm -hmm. to the problem. Mm -hmm. And that was maybe the main worry, yeah. like not being good enough with the computational side of things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like someone but who has like programmed so, their whole life or studied yeah. computer science or anything like that. So would you say it's like you bring your researcher mindset to the current things? When you were a researcher, you solved problems no one knew the answer to and you do the same now? Um, yes, yes, I think oh. so. And um, I have to remind myself once in a while about <laughs> that, like how it mm -hmm. was these, mm -hmm. uh, let's say five years ago, um, mm -hmm. when I was the researcher struggling with something and also feeling all my questions not big enough, like mm -hmm. what would I have needed at the at the time yeah. to uh, yeah. kind of brave off, <laughs> ask my questions yeah. um, from the specialists and yeah. Yeah. also what kind of um, support would I have needed like um, yeah. that in many occasions, because everyone is short on time, yeah. it is the easy answer to find a link to documentation and just mm -hmm. say, hey, read this. This is yeah. an easy solution to many of uh, troubles that people have. Yeah. But uh, as a researcher, I have gotten that answer also at some point. And maybe I've even read the page mm -hmm. at the time, but I didn't like, I was not able to put what is written yeah. there into the context mm -hmm. of my work. So yeah. nowadays I try to remember that. And when someone asks a question, I like try to first ask, okay, what is this actually about before mm -hmm. answering with mm -hmm. also some links uh, in a side sentence, like saying, okay, you yeah. could also take a look here at this tutorial, but also try to yeah. explain how this relates to the actual yeah. question yeah. that was asked. Okay, that's good. So we've got a question from the note. So I'm at the beginning of my career as a master's student and I'm considering academia. What is the thing that one should know when starting? I guess you're not the academic career path, <laughs> but this is similar to a common question I've asked people. What do you know now that you wish someone had told you years ago? So that this path exists, like that there is a way to not be an academic, not be a researcher, mm -hmm. uh, doing your own research, trying to write papers and doing that stuff, but mm -hmm. that there is also stuff like you do at Aldo, the research software engineer, stuff mm -hmm. like we do at CSC with the user support yeah. and so on. People that are very much connected to the research but don't have to write their own papers, but rather support mm -hmm. everyone who needs the support um, yeah. doing their research. And that mm -hmm. can be um, more efficient, faster, or just even yeah. like getting started with it. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had known that earlier. I got yeah. to know that actually through Code Refinery, because when I visited the Code Refinery workshop, I, uh, mm -hmm. um, got really excited about this uh, <laughs> and okay. like yeah, asked yeah. to get involved in the project and uh, do stuff there and went then from helper to instructor to an organizer and community manager. Um, but uh, only through joining that like mm -hmm. network, I got to know that there is 
they're much more beyond the yeah. traditional academics and research mm -hmm. software mm -hmm. engineering and so on. Yeah. The next question there asks about what kind of positions are in private companies, which I guess neither of us are really qualified to answer. Maybe next year I could try to find someone that works at a private company and invite them. Yeah. And but... I know that there is like also a research position in private companies, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that um, as a short answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I guess the point of this whole interview is that there are positions which are related to research and quite interesting in their own right, which are not the academic track, which many people are qualified for and don't know about. Yeah, and it's so interesting to also, as a researcher, you are in your own little world with your mm -hmm. focus point, especially as PhD, you have your little slice of the world that you're working on. Mm -hmm. But as what we do, we get in contact with many different people from many different domains, mm -hmm. backgrounds, uh, levels in their or stages in their career. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very interesting to be part of kind of all of that, even mm -hmm. when it's just mm -hmm. a little bit through one question that we get in our user support sessions yeah. or something. Would, would you say that you have a wider variety or more interesting problems now or when you were <laughs> in the academic track doing your own stuff? Yes, definitely. Also, mm -hmm. partly because, well, when I was a full academic, um, I that was just when I started with programming and so and scientific computing things mm -hmm. in general. So I worked on one big project for very, very long because mm -hmm. I just had to learn at the time also. Mm -hmm. So I got very sick of that project, yeah. okay. <laughs> but it's still also with me, yeah. but now it's more varied. So there's many different uh, questions yeah. that people come with. Some are easy to solve, like within a few minutes, mm -hmm. some need more hours, some yeah. maybe need more days Yeah. Um, and very much varied. Yeah. So we're coming a little bit close to the end here. There's still okay. almost 10 minutes, but please, so now's the time people start writing all your random questions in the notes. The ones that are most relevant to Samantha, I will raise up, but other people can also answer there. Um, there is a question I would like to answer, actually. Yes, Do people ahead. in industry use these things you mentioned earlier, like Conda containers and HPC? Uh, Conda and containers, yes, definitely, um, if they know about it. <laughs> That's not necessarily yeah. a given. Um, and for us, it's probably harder to reach people in companies. HPC, maybe nowadays a bit more than earlier, because, for example, the Lumi supercomputer is available for companies as well. And if you go to the Lumi website, you can find out like that there is a few companies using Lumi. Mm -hmm. um, so for those, we also offer kind of uh, tra a specific training. Yeah. And Git. Oh, we wish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it really is in, in industry. Maybe someone who's working in industry can yeah. talk. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it there's an the answer yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you say that this course that's here now is also useful for industry track people? Yes, I would say so, because you mm. might be the one bringing that stuff to the company. Mm. They might not mm. know about it for whatever reason. And you might mm -hmm. be the one uh, that then has a solution to a problem by, for example, yeah. uh, knowing how to, well, organize your project to start yeah. with, or mm -hmm. if you visit the code refinery course, like knowing how to use Git that mm -hmm. can make mm -hmm. many processes more efficient. And yeah. then the company will be very happy about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, so would you say that like these kind of courses give you a advantage when looking for other jobs. I mean, I guess, well, that's probably obvious. Like if I let's would, say uh, yeah. you finish a PhD and you have a bunch of articles to your name or you have a bunch of articles and you say, I've trained to use supercomputers in Git, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, that probably depends on what you're then looking for. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, so what I have learned from uh, getting the job at CSC is that just having used a supercomputer is a very good starting point for even like working in supercomputing yeah. support, for example, because mm -hmm. you actually know, you might not know every detail, but you can learn that also on yeah. the job. I learn so much every day on the job. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, but you know where the researchers are coming from. So you have been in the situation yeah. that you have asked some of these questions yourself. So, um, I think with with that knowledge, you can be a very good person to be between the IT admins mm -hmm. um, and the researchers to translate between them. Like mm -hmm. if the IT admin says like, oh, this is not something we do here, then yeah. you can start explaining why this is not something we do here, for yeah. example. Yeah. Cool. So what's your experience with the PhD overall? Would you say it was worth it? <laughs> So I'm still working on it. <laughs> so yes, I think okay. it's still worth it. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because I have now also seen in my current job, it's a permanent position, so I would not necessarily need it for that. But um, we are still working so close with uh, academia that um, we also like want to support research projects from the beginning and mm -hmm. like support them really a bit more in depth. And for that, we need to be part of the research yeah. project funding application. And for that, it's better yeah. to have a PhD to your mm -hmm. name because you actually have some academic um, merits yeah. that help with this, with the project application. Yeah. Well, without that, we have only like a few people who can be this uh, mm -hmm. PIs of the research project within the yeah. company. So to many research projects that want to maybe put us on the application, we have to say no, because mm -hmm. we don't have the people to actually mm -hmm. cover that. Mm -hmm. so, and I have learned everything that brought me right here, right now, yeah. uh, during the time of my PhD, basically, okay. yeah. none of it I learned during my actual studies, masters, mm -hmm. or, um, or yeah. uh, bachelor. Yeah. Okay. When you say like the PhD is basically experience that counts yes. for something. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think like, of course, you don't need to do a PhD. You can also work as a researcher after your master's. Yeah. Um, the PhD maybe allows that you can do uh, or also gives a bit easier the possibility to do courses. Like, um, mm -hmm. for example, I could get, I think over 10 credits mm -hmm. for my PhD from visiting CSC courses, for example. And that also, of course, motivated me to do the courses because I could fill my credits with that. Um, mm -hmm. If I would not have done the PhD, yeah. I would have maybe done like maybe one course a year or something just to yeah. learn something new, stay up to date and stuff. Yeah. But in that sense, it was really useful. Yeah. So we're almost out of time. So what do you hope to continue learning and what comes next? Um, well, I hope to continue learning more about how things work, how many of our services mm -hmm. work, <laughs> um, how to um, reach, like uh, currently my focus is a lot on outreach. So I hope to learn more about how to best reach out to people that would have use for our services and uh, that would have use for our support because there is so much of it available. So many people that are very happy to help um, with, with things. And I'm always so sad to hear stories like that someone has uh, been struggling with something that we could have helped with if mm -hmm. we had only known mm -hmm. after two years of struggling or something yeah. like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're basically out of time. There's a comment that you're really cool and a good role model. So yes, I would agree with that. Thank you. Um, you know, many of our visitors here are like that. So yeah, I mean, we have to keep finding more for next year. Um, but yeah, Glad I mean, really, this was useful. Thank you for having like, me. Yeah, I mean, like really, Samantha and all of us, we're basically normal people that want to keep um, work going. <laughs> Help, basically, yeah. You're normal nerds. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, okay, so I guess thank you, Samantha, and see you around at the next Cone Refinery workshop in September. Yeah, and if you have any more questions, I'll still be here and answer them in the document. Keep them coming. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Bye.